like Christmas. Okay, now I'm between you and supper. And you know, it's really kind of a good thing because I wanted a joke and I talked to my cousin earlier about a joke and she told me one, but I really can't tell it, Jenny. <laughs> um, it, it would have embarrassed me more than you would have laughed. So but she is a great joke teller. So meet with Jenny Hayden afterwards. She can tell you some good jokes. As David said, my name's Jackie Clements. Uh, I am a former county recorder uh, a few years ago. That was my first elected office in Tipton County, and then I served as the auditor in Tipton County. And then I moved back home to Clinton County and served as an auditor there uh, and served one term in the state house. And let me tell you, the county courthouse is a lot greater place to be in than the state house. I enjoyed it a whole lot more. What I'm here to talk about today is budgets. And can I ask how many county councilmen we had? There were no commissioners. Do we have any county? Oh, quite a few, okay. Um, this is a great big topic and it can go a long way and I'm not gonna read all of these PowerPoints to you. Um, you can read as well as I can read them to you. But I wanna touch on some highlights on county budgets, uh, county financing and, and different responsibilities in the payment of claims. Um, the, the annual budget is the, is the financial plan for the county and once a year the county gets together and puts that plan together and they must stay within a limit, uh, the levy. And it also gives you a detail as the elected official of how much you can spend um, of the county's money each year. Um, as you can see, it defines what the count, the different roles in the, of the budget process. Obviously, the county council is the fiscal body. They set those budgets. They must set those budgets within a levy. And um, they also set the salary ordinance for all uh, county officials and employees. Um, the county auditor is the fiscal officer. The county treasurer is the custodian of the money. She handles all the money and the banks and the investments. The county commissioners are the executive body and no payment can be made uh, without final authority approval of that county commissioners. There are some uh, manuals out on the webpage uh, of the different offices. There's a county manual, there's a county auditor's manual, and there's a county treasurer's manual uh, that have different parts of the budget process within those. Um, that you can go out and I gave you those web pages. There is some budget terminology. Um, a lot of people get, I'm not going to read them all, but a lot of people get confused between a taxing unit and a tax district. A taxing unit is that body that can set the tax rate and a taxing district is a combination of those units that sets an overall tax rate for a geographic area. The levy is the amount of taxes that we are eligible to collect in any given year. Um, and the tax rate is that levy divided by the net assessed value. And the maximum levy, sometimes called the frozen levy, is what we have to operate within. This was established back in 1973 when Governor Bowen did the first, what I can remember, property tax relief um, for local people. The levy is allowed to grow an est a, a specific amount each year. That, ma that amount is determined by a six-year average, and it's quite a functionality of how that's determined. Um, but it's a six-year average of non-farm income. And that's determined by the DLGF annually, and each county is notified. All counties get the same growth. Doesn't matter if you're rural, urban, large, or small. Keep going backwards. We have three different types of funds in the, in the budget process. There's a levy controlled fund. Those funds take that levy and divide the, the dollars you need by that levy to set a rate. We have a rate controlled fund and those are usually your CUME funds like CUME Bridge, CCD, CUME Courthouse. Those funds have a rate that's established by the council and then that rate is divided into the assessed value or multiplied by the assessed value uh, to de determine the levy. 
The final is a debt service fund, and those funds are protected now. And they are funds that meet, they are determined by the amount of principal and interest that is required to pay that debt every year. Property tax caps are kind of a new thing uh, for a lot of people still. And that's that circuit breaker, and it's based on what type of property you have, whether you have 1, 2, or 3%. They're defined there. And a property tax credit or circuit breaker credit is the, dollar, is the difference between that uh, property tax cap and what the actual taxes calculated by the assessed value times the tax rate um, turn out to be. The appropriation is the amount of money that's set by the county council for any one line item or category. And there are different classifications of categories. The 1,000 series, and now I think it's 10,000 um, because of computers and their um, new softwares and their, their numbering system. The 10,000 series is personal services. The 20,000 series is supplies. 30,000 is other services and charges and 40,000 is the capital purchases. Um, most of you will, will deal with the first three. Uh, very few of you will deal with a lot of capital purchases. That's the vast majority of that is done um, by the Board of Commissioners. Um, the current budget year, there's a lot of talk between, the, this off, you're, usually the auditor's office is working in two different years on the budget process. They're working in the current year which is the year that you're spending, and they're working in the ensuing year, which is the year that you're now putting the budget process together to be collected or to be used for the next year. These are forms that are used in the budget process, and some of them um, all of you will use, and some of them none of you, will, or only councilmen will use and auditors. Um, the budget one form is one that all of you will use. And as a department head, each year um, you will be asked to estimate what you feel you're going to need to operate your office for the ensuing year. So all of you will be filling out the budget one form. Several of you, and it depends on the county that you're in, will fill out the budget form two. And this is the estimate of revenues. And for those of you who collect revenues in your office that go into county general, clerks and recorders both, you will determine or you, you may be asked to figure out about what you think you're going to be bringing in to the general fund. Some auditors do it themselves. Some auditors ask that each department head or each elected official do their own. Um, the notice, the budget form three is a notice to taxpayers and that's the advertisement that is done so that taxpayers know when the public hearing is, when the adoption hearing is, the location of those uh, meetings. Um, the budget 4A and 4B are handled by the auditor's office, and that's how the rates are calculated. A 1782 notice you'll often hear about is a notice that's starting to come out this, right now. The first uh, 10 counties, I think, have gotten theirs. And this is the notice that shows the final action um, done by the DLGF. On, your, on the a county's budget. The budget certification is then the next step after that. It's the, it's the final definition of what can be spent and what the tax rates will be in a given year. The final form that everyone is, may be involved with is the 100R. And this is an annual personnel report that's done by the auditor's office, but she may ask you if you're gonna be using part-time people in the ensuing year um, and then it will show everybody's salary from the previous year, uh, including full and part-time people. It keeps falling down. Oh, wrong way. Um, the budget calendar is a calendar of schedule of events. It, pretty much stays the same every year. Uh, a few of the dates may change. In May or June, you'll get some information from the county auditor's office, um, which is your, one, your form ones and your form 144s, which are the salary request. 
On July 1st, the county auditor will start compiling all of that information that has come in and get it ready for the advertising. Um, she has several duties that I think we only have one auditor here, or elect. Um, she has several duties that um, she has to take care of in certifying assessed values, certifying uh, estimated revenues for the second half of the year. And then beginning in 2012, the DLGF required that budget forms all be completed online in, in their system gateway. Uh, this gives the opportunity for the public to look at all those forms at any time. Beginning in the year 2016, all advertising will also be done on Gateway. They'll no longer have to pay for newspaper advertising of their notices. Uh, the one thing that I left off of this information is the non-binding reviews. And there are binding and non-binding reviews that are held by the county council. A non-binding review is one that is um, for those units of government that have elected officials, the other townships, um, cities, towns. And um, the binding reviews are for those units of government who have no elected officials in them, like fire districts, uh, libraries, solid waste districts. And the county council has to, to act on both sets of those. Types of revenue coming into the county, you'll hear often um, as you're working with the auditor or the, or the council that you might be a Kajit County or a Coet County. And these are the adjusted gross incomes. Um, the Kajit was the first one that was established back uh, when, we had, when property tax relief was established in the 70s. And it was help, it was revenue that was to help um, give relief for those property taxes, and it's the, we no longer have property tax relief per se, um, but there is Kajit money that goes to, to help with the levy. Um, these monies can be spent um, on just about anything that property tax dollars can be spent on, and the, those monies all come into the county auditor, and she distributes them out to all of the local units of government. The additional Kajit that was just passed just a few years ago was for property tax levy freezes, property tax relief, um, public safety. You'll hear about public safety low it. That's a Kajit tax. And then there's one for correctional facilities where if you have a federal court order or several, there's a couple of criterias that allow for that, um, will allow you to add a, an income tax to take care of your jail and the operation and bonding of your jail. The other income tax is COET. Um, it came along later uh, in, the, in the creation of taxes. Um, it again can be paid, used to pay for government expenses, uh, to provide homestead credit relief, and to fund operations of communication systems and public transit. The county auditor also distributes this money. It comes in from the state to the county auditor's office, and then it, she distributes it out to the local units uh, schools do not get COET money. Additional COETs can be used the same as the uh, CAGIT for property tax freeze, property tax relief, uh, public safety, and the correctional facilities. Seed it or edit taxes are those that are um, create or that are uh, adopted for usually, they originally were done for economic growth. They now, too, have a wider base that they can be spent for. Uh, they can be spent for any lawful purpose that the other tax revenues can be spent. But you'll usually hear the, the edit monies are being spent for economic growth and development, roads, uh, sewers, uh, those type of infrastructures. A county who is a Kajit County cannot be, cannot be a Coet County. You can only be one or the other. Um, and you can, but any, both of those can have the edit funds. So you can be a Kajit and Cedic County, or you can be a Coet and Cedic County. Financial institution tax is another source of revenue. It's one that's paid by the Department of Revenue for those units that have um, a bank or a financial institution in them. It too is sent to the auditor and she distributes it.
LOWIT or wheel tax and surtax are monies that um, the county council can adopt um, a tax, a user tax that you pay when you go to get your, your um, license plates. And those, can, those taxes can be spent only to reconstruct, repair, and maintain roads and streets. They cannot be spent on salaries. MVH funds are those funds that come from um, the gasoline taxes. Um, they are placed in the highway fund and can be used for salaries, equipment, or maintenance. Local road and street monies also come from the excise taxes. And these are, both of these are received monthly. And they can be, the local road and street money can only be spent for local roads and streets. It cannot be spent for equipment, and it cannot be spent for salaries or benefits. Excise tax it is a tax that you pay when you get your um, license plates. That money, too, comes into the county auditor's office, and it's distributed in June and December out to the un units of government based on their tax levy and the total collection. Then the final revenues that come into a county are those revenues of building permits, health fees, recorder's fees, clerk's fees. And these are pretty much the revenue streams that come into local government. One of the things that takes place from one year to the next are what we call encumbrances. And when you have an appropriation or you have it that has some, some money left in it at the end of the year, you have the opportunity, if the council chooses, to request an encumbrance of that money. However, to request that encumbrance, you must have an invoice dated before December 31st of the current year that is not paid, and there must be enough money in that line item to pay to re make that request. If the money is encumbered, then it can only, that money can only be spent to cover that specific invoice. So if, if the actual debt ends up being a little less than the original invoice or a contract, because you can do it by a contract also, then anything that you encumbered that's not spent for that specific contract or that specific invoice is just null and void. It just stays there. It can't be used for anything else in the ensuing year. The appropriations, like I said earlier, are set by the county council. And there are a list of exceptions um, for those funds that can be paid without appropriation in that auditor's manual on page 814. I believe it's still 814. I don't think they've updated that this year. Um, there are a few. Title 4D incentive money does not need to be appropriated. Um, Reim uh, reimbursements of insurances does not need to be appropriated. And there is a list of, of those in that uh, manual, or the auditor could get you that list. But almost every fund that's tax dollars of the county, whether it's a grant, um, whether it's tax dollar revenue, or fees that you've brought in, all must be appropriated by the county council. There are reports um, that you can ask your county auditor for throughout the year that'll tell you where you are in each of these different appropriations. I mean, a lot of you will keep your own little ledger book, but you might, I'll, I'll encourage you to periodically ask for a report from your county auditor to make sure that a mistake hasn't been made, something hasn't been brought out of your appropriation that shouldn't be, or what you have brought out is, what you expect to come out is out. And, um, I've listed two of the, of the software systems, and I now have the name of the, or the report of the third one, um, GUTS. For those of you who have, whose counties have GUTS, there's a department budgetary report that you can ask the, the auditor for at any point in time through the year, she should be able to run it. And you can kind of watch and make sure your appropriations are staying and that you're not going to overspend. One thing I'll tell you that kind of was kind of useful to me when you get that budgetary report, all of them have a percentage 
um, down the right side of the report that tells you what percentage of the money you've either spent or what percentage you have left. And if you look at the payroll, at the salary classifications, that will tell you just where you are in the year, whether you're 42% through the year or 65% through the year. So you can kind of guesstimate if you've overspent someplace on and know to, to maybe slide back. You can watch your, if you pay your telephone out of your budget. Everything should be in comparison to that payroll because it's a regular bi-weekly or bi-monthly um, payment coming out. So you can judge where you are in your budget by those payroll percentages. <clears throat> um, if you see that you're low and you are going to be needing something, um, there, it, it takes time to get an additional appropriation done. It's not just something you can go in and say, I need more money in this appropriation. If you want an additional appropriation, there is a time limit because they, it must be advertised uh, for the public to know you're requesting it. And so you need to work with your county auditor and make sure that you're staying in advance if you have a large claim that's going to come out. You also have the ability, when you see one appropriation going low, and you're, you have something left in another to request a transfer. And a transfer of those appropriations, if it's within one category, say you have paper and you have um, pens, if it stays within that category, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, you can re request, re request the transfer without council action. However, if you're wanting to move it from your supplies category, to your personal services category, you must ask the approval of the county council. So you need to kind of stay ahead of that each month to make sure that you're where you need to be and you're not caught off guard when you have a, a bill that needs to be done. Um, in the claim process, every elected official has a responsibility in the claim process. And you, as a, as a department head or the elected official for that uh, office, will receive your goods and services. And then you need to verify, you need to take the time to verify, verify that validity of that invoice. Make sure they haven't overcharged you. Make sure that they have an added sales tax, because counties do not pay sales tax. Make sure that what they've charged you for, you did in fact receive, and then sum up that invoice to make sure that it's correct. You also then, at that point in time, need to file or complete a claim voucher, a warrant voucher. And on that warrant voucher, you're going to put who you want it paid to, and you can either list the detail, depending on your county, you can either list the detail or you can say, see copy of invoice. Counties do it separately, so you need to check with your auditor's office to see what's acceptable in your county. You, all, you, you need to sign and date it. As the elected official, there are two places for a signature. One is to say, yes, I did receive these goods and they, this invoice is accurate. The other one then is signed by the county auditor where she audits it and makes sure that it um, all falls within the guidelines. You then need to tell her where you want it paid from. It's really not the auditor's office's responsibility to decide where something should be paid from. That's yours because you know what you're going to be spending throughout the year and they don't. So you need to make sure that you put that appropriation number on the front of that claim voucher so they know where to spend to, to take that payment from. Then the auditor's office is going to get it. She's going to check for the signature on the, on the uh, claim voucher. She's going to, again, review the invoice. She can't tell if everything was there, or she or he, I shouldn't just say she. The auditor can't tell if everything has been received, so that's your responsibility. But they'll add it up and make sure that there are no sales taxes on it, no late penalties, um, because counties don't pay late penalties either. Um, they'll recompute it, and then they'll verify. The auditor will sign it and verify that it's eligible and that there are monies within that appropriation to pay. They'll then complete a claim docket of all the claims that be, have been requested in a time frame. Some counties pay bi-weekly, some counties pay claims once a month, 
so you'll need to check and see what your county does. And then they'll submit them to the commissioners for approval. The county commissioners then, it's their responsibility to review and make sure that all these claims are legitimate claims. Uh, in a regular scheduled meeting, they will receive a claim docket which lists all of the claims, who they're to be paid to and how much they're for. They have the right to request to review any of those claims for payment. Uh, they have the right to deny any of those claims for payment. They can deny them totally or they can deny them um, and to, to long enough to verify that they are accurate. Um, in order to approve the claims for payment, they must make a motion in the meeting and then they should be signing a docket. Um, this process is to be done for all funds except the recorder's perpetuation fund. Now you still will run it through the process, but there are no appropriations in there. The other thing is, is the difference is the court claims must be advertised still. That's the one thing that's still to be advertised by the auditor's office. For those funds that are outside of the, the commissioner's jurisdiction for approval, such as the commissary funds or your clerk's trust funds, um, they'll make no claim to those. However, they have the right to audit them. Commissioners have the right to audit any funds that are handled through the county, whether it be the commissary fund, your trust funds. Okay. Then there are a few other financial duties of elected officials. The executive, um, as I said, the commissioners have the right to audit uh, any and all claims. Uh, once a year, the commissioners are to meet um, as the Board of Finance and determine what banks uh, the counties will use. They determine an investment policy um, and they review the investment policy. And then there's some conflicting um, statute out there, but it also says at the second meeting, second regular meeting of the executive, the Board of Commissioners, they are to approve two different reports. One of them is the 100R, which is the statement of all employees and their salaries. And the other one is an annual report. However, the annual report now does, does not have to be done completed by the county auditor's office until the end of February. So we have conflicting statutes there and um, I'm guessing that they'll, they'll approve it once it's been approved. Um, that pretty much is in a quick sale to get you to supper. And I've got us back on time. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know this doesn't, the budgeting process doesn't pertain to you guys, but it's important that you know how it works since you have your own budget that you want to handle and you want to make sure that you can operate your office. If there's no questions, I don't see David. John, will you go out and get David? Or Christina? I want to thank you.